walking. Yes, indeed, I'm talking for you and me, and I'm hoping that you come back to me. I'm lonely as I can be, and I'm waiting for your company, and I'm hoping that you come back to me. What you gonna do when the well runs dry? You're gonna run away and hide. I'm gonna run right by your side for you, pretty baby. All right, this is gonna be a little bit of different uh, but somewhat along the same lines of what of some of the work I've been doing. Uh, as an electrical engineer I occasionally have to draw schematics and build circuit boards so uh, as part of my solar tracker efforts that I'm working on I need a little bit of a prototyping board so I designed up this circuit here pretty simple bridge rectifier, voltage regulator, some filter capacitors, uh, socket for a uh, microprocessor module, uh, a bunch of uh, the test points brought out for that module, and then some uh, optocouplers to drive some of the voltage off the board. And in this program here, which is called Eagle PCB, which is a free downloadable program with some restrictions about the module size and so forth, it's pretty easy to draw, draw these schematics and get everything connected up properly. Once you have everything to, uh, drawn properly, then you can uh, transition over to doing what a board layout. And so if I flip over to the board layout uh, page, <coughs> those are those same parts that I picked in the schematic shown on a board. Now originally they were over in this area here, and I just uh, located them on the board in, in uh, positions that make them pretty easy to be routed and uh, maintained. So I have a con the connector, input output connector on the left side here. I've got the bridge rectifier diodes built up over here, the capacitors, the two optocouplers, the rectifier, and then here's the socket for the microprocessor. Now I can take any one of these uh, parts like this resistor here. I can relocate it. I can move it around. There's a lot of things I can do. I can do them as groups. Um, no big deal. So that's, that's what you do during the layout process. Then when you get this, you can see these gray lines here. These are what's called air wires. Those are where the where the signals need to get to, but they're not necessarily going to go that way. So the, initially it's just showing the computer which how, what has to connect up to what. Once you get this all set up, you can either go in here and manually route these lines uh, dodging around the different uh, uh, through holes for the different parts and try to get everything stitched together but it's quite a, a little bit of a puzzle so they have a built-in auto router on this program that if you set up they have what's called design rules if you click this button here <coughs> uh, you can specify the number of layers and then here's the big thing is the clearances between the routes and uh, other and pads of parts. So I have it set up right now for 10 mil wire uh, widths and 10 mil spacing between uh, the wires and the pads and so forth. Now if I have that all uh, set up a certain way and then I hit the auto router, <coughs> you'll see how it uh, go goes through <coughs> and tries to route the board manually or uh, automatically. And then down in the corner here, it's going to tell how much it, uh, how complete it got. Sometimes it takes a, you know, a minute or so, and if it's a very complicated board, it can take hours. It kind of gives you an idea of how that got routed together. So right now it says it, it finished. It's 98.3 percent uh, complete. So there's one route that it didn't do. So if I go up here to my uh, my layer palette I can look at just the bottom and the pads and the unroutes hit apply and it shows me excuse me I guess I gotta drop this uh, this one here so just apply this okay there's one unroute between these two pads here so I can manually put that route in there not sure why it didn't do it itself but that's how you figure out which ones you need to go manually do yourself Okay, so that's all pretty cool. <clears throat> now these those lines that I showed were uh, pretty 
uh, pretty thin and you wouldn't necessarily do that on a, on a real board so let me show you the one I took the same basic layout after I had it all optimized and I routed it with thicker lines and with a ground plane in it okay so here's the board that I uh, did myself uh, using uh, 30 mil uh, route widths and 30 mil spacings between wires and pads and it gave me much uh, better connectivity between each of the different parts. Then I added I mean, all the empty spaces I was able to add a ground plane which basically any of the signals that would be uh, a ground wire would go to this ground plane. I'll show you what that looks like here when I hit this rat's nest thing. So this blue here now is all the copper that will be in place there. There will be essentially the system ground including this uh, contact over here. So then what you do once you have all that drawn is you can put it into a black and white form. You can add your own uh, textural information and from that you print it out on a, some transparency and from that you go into the board etching process. So let's do that next. Alright, so the next thing we do, we take our transparency, we mount it to a piece of clear glass that we cleaned up real nice, tape it down real good on the edges with the uh, the idea is the flat side will face the light source and then uh, <clears throat> it'll ex expose our light sensitive circuit board material. And I've already cut down a piece to size. You can see this circuit board has a, 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 a removable sheet on the back side to protect itself from the exposure so I'm going to peel that back tape it down in place and then expose this to a light source. Alright I got the board taped down to the glass let's go find a light Obvious. source. Obvious. My favorite light source is the sun. We expose it to the sun for about 20 seconds. five more seconds that should do it let's go develop it right, so now. The first thing we're going to do is put it in some positive developer here we go very quickly you'll see the uh, circuit start to appear. This can only sometimes take only about 30 seconds. Alright, that's done. Alright, so there it is with the uh, after the development process. Now we'll put it into the resist bath and we'll, we'll uh, etch off the uh, copper that's uh, between all of the green lines that's showing here. So now we put this into uh, etching solution. And this takes uh, generally about 30 minutes for the uh, the copper to be etched away. So I'll come back later when it's about done and we'll see what it's looking like. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. Some of the copper's starting to thin out. Probably got another 20 minutes to go. And we'll have all that copper etched off that's that we don't want on the board. All right, you can see uh, the copper is melting away from in between where the resist is showing. Look up another five minutes and it'll be all out of there. All right, looks like we got all the copper off. So we'll give it a rinse and then we'll clean it off with acetone to get that resist off and we'll be done. Bye.